What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel. I'm Pop Lito. Listen to my dude Andy to learn all about the beast that's going to be transporting President Trump around. Here are the coolest things about President Trump's presidential limo. Number 10. It's not a Cadillac. The United States presidential state car is nicknamed the Beast. Cadillac 1, Limousine 1, First Car, and codename Stagecoach by the Secret Service. Whatever you choose to call it, it's the official state car of the President of the United States. The White House will debut a fleet of new presidential limousines later in 2017. However, despite the distinct Cadillac look, it doesn't share much with the Cadillac. Unlike any presidential state car before it, the Beast has little in common with any other standard production car. Its chassis, diesel engine, and transmission are all based on those used in the Chevrolet Kodiak, a rugged commercial vehicle previously sold as everything from a dump truck to a U-Haul. Some standard trim pieces, such as headlamps from the Escalade and taillights from the now discontinued STS, keep it looking vaguely Cadillac-like. Construction contracts for the next model of presidential state car were given out in 2013. Public records show that General Motors was awarded three contracts for the new presidential limousine. Photographs of the 2017 model show that the vehicle has the same grille and headlamp design as contemporary Cadillac models. Number 9. Armored like the Honey Badger. Needless to say, the Beast has security specs that are out of this world. Calling it armored is an understatement. There is probably not a better armored vehicle with windows on the planet than the Beast. Its armor plating is said to be 8 inches thick and its doors weigh as much as those on a Boeing 757 aircraft. Just think about that for a second. There are some photographs of President Obama getting out of the previous model of the Beast where you can actually see how thick those doors are. They even look like plane doors. 5 inch thick bulletproof windows, none of which can actually open except for the driver's window that can roll down all of 3 inches, contain at least 5 layers at any given point to put a serious damper on any effort by the Oswalds and Booths of this world. And those gigantic, nearly bus sized Goodyear tires are Kevlar reinforced run flats capable of keeping the beast on the road for quite some distance if needed. The interior is totally sealed off from the outside world to reduce risks of a chemical attack, while a special foam surrounds the fuel tank to insulate it in the event of any sort of impact. The bodywork is made from hardened steel, aluminum, titanium, and ceramics. In addition to the heavy armor plated doors, the Beast has a reinforced steel plate running underneath the vehicle that protects it from roadside bombs. Number 8. Night Vision Cameras Any Secret Service agent assigned to drive the President has to take an intense defensive driving course on a special track at the Secret Service Academy in Beltsville, Maryland. They practice evasive maneuvers, high-speed cornering, and precision driving. One of the reasons that the drivers need these advanced driving skills is to be able to handle the car from a night vision camera in case there is a complete loss of visibility. The Beast has special night vision cameras and monitors. The camera is mounted inside the grille. The night vision technology is there in case of extreme scenarios where there is no light or a total obstruction of the windshield. The agent driving the Beast should then be able to navigate it safely while using only the monitors. Even though the Beast has more in common, structurally speaking, with a school bus than a sports car, its highly trained drivers can execute tight J-turns and other police-style evasion techniques in the event of a situation gone south. One agent told AutoWeek that the Beast actually handles quite well, considering how much it weighs. Number 7. 007 Goodies Inside the limo, there are a couple of Remington shotguns and rocket-propelled grenades close enough at hand for the Secret Service to grab and use in an extreme emergency. The shotguns and grenades have never been needed in the past, and their exact location inside the car is classified. Since Secret Service agents are already armed with handguns, the shotguns and grenades would only be necessary in a severely defensive, almost warlike situation. The current presidential state car can also fire multi-spectrum infrared smoke grenades as a countermeasure to a rocket propel grenade attack or anti-tank missiles. I wonder if President Trump himself needs to know how to use those shotguns. Although, if I had a bet on it, I'd bet that Trump would know how to use one. Number 6. 
emergency blood. After the assassination of Kennedy, as well as President Gerald Ford's 1975 motorcade collision with a teenager, the Secret Service has had to rethink what they can do in the case of unexpected injury to the president. Whether it's an assassination, as in the case of Kennedy, or a total, and in this case harmless, accident, as in the case of Ford, if the president gets hurt, medical attention should be immediately available. The Beast, therefore, carries at all times a fully equipped blood bank with the president's blood type in case of an emergency. This is linked to the fact that the presidential limo doesn't only serve as a means of getting the president from point A to point B, but also acts as a kind of portable safe space. See, the Beast is designed to act as a barrier between the president and any sort of life-threatening situation. That is why you will always see the Beast strategically parked whether on an airstrip or at an event, in such a way that it forms a barrier between the president and whatever crowd is around. It is also always parked in a way that ensures a quick getaway. So, if the first citizen of the US is outside of the car and gets injured or is under attack, he can get into the beast and get instant medical attention, and blood, if needed, while being totally isolated from any gunfire or poison gas as he speeds away through an already cleared route. Yep. That's another thing, the Secret Service spends weeks planning every trip. Apart from checking every dumpster and manhole for possible security risks, they also ensure that there's always a getaway plan. And fresh blood. Number 5. The Cost for Taxpayers Before we talk about the price of the Beast, we have to mention that the Beast isn't alone. The Secret Service actually has a few Beast-like vehicles. Although it's not known whether they're all functionally identical, some look more like a Cadillac DTS than the Beast, the other limousines are used for high-ranking foreign officials and VIP guests when they're in Washington, D.C. It isn't known why the Secret Service rotates between presidential vehicles, however, but we assume it has something to do with security since repetition and predictability is bad for protecting the president. So, no one is sure how many versions there are of the actual Beast and how many are cheaper replicas to function as decoys. But we do know that each state car is expected to cost between a million and one and a half million dollars. The actual price per unit, however, shrinks in comparison to the money spent on its development. Remember, this isn't a commercial vehicle and only a handful will ever be built and sold. Usually, the cost of development of a new car is carried by the manufacturers of the car and then covered by commercial sales. With the Beast, and other state cars however, the government has to carry all of that cost. That's to say, they need to pay for the development and then for the actual car. As of January 2016, GM had been paid an astronomical $15,800,765 for its work on the new model. As if that is not enough, because of the excess weight, the car can only reach about 60 miles per hour and only achieves 3.7 to 8 miles per gallon. Burdened with lugging a rumored 20,000 pounds, the diesel engine isn't a rocket either. Hitting 60 miles per hour from a complete stop takes about 15 seconds. Number 4. The Beast Flies Private The Secret Service makes use of a C-17 Globemaster Transport aircraft to haul the Beast. As well as a second limo and a heavily armored Chevrolet Suburban communications vehicle to wherever the president might be traveling. The Suburban is nicknamed Roadrunner and it's said to be a rolling communications office directly linked to a military satellite, hence the SATCOM dome festooned to its roof. In August 2015, when President Obama went to Nairobi, Kenya, US cargo planes flew as many as 60 vehicles into Kenya for the presidential visit, including the Beast. Obama was in Nairobi to attend the annual Global Entrepreneurship Summit, which at the time was marked by the U.S. Embassy as a possible target for terrorists. Number 3. Number of Passengers At the very least, the Beast always has three passengers aboard. The driver, the President's lead Secret Service protective agent in the front passenger seat, and of course, the President himself. However, four additional seats in the back are available three rearward-facing spots on a bench, and one spot next to the president for a guest. A folding desk separates the president from his guest spot, while the president is cut off from the outside world by the armor and bulletproof glass of the vehicle, he has at his fingertips communication capabilities including phones, satellite communications, and the internet. 
Somewhat surprisingly, the president's bench is covered in a dark blue cloth rather than leather. Also, the shoulder belts retract toward the center of the bench and buckle into the outward corners, the reverse of a normal rear seat. Number two, civilian life for the beast. Would you ever be able to own the beast yourself? Can some random rich person buy one of these bad boys from the government? In short, no. In the late 20th century, it was customary for the United States Secret Service to participate in the destruction of the presidential state car after it had run its course. Modern presidential state cars are dismantled and destroyed with the assistance of the Secret Service to prevent anyone from knowing all its secrets. The federal agents would use bullets and explosive rounds for two reasons. The first is to demonstrate the automobile's effectiveness against such weaponry. The second purpose is to shred the vehicle and destroy the secrets of its manufacture, armoring, and defensive abilities. Number one, tear gas for the people? In the case of a riot, the beast has a tear gas cannon to incapacitate big crowds and enable the presidential motorcade to escape a tent situation. As we mentioned earlier, the inside of the car is totally sealed off in the case of a chemical attack. This also comes in handy when you're dispersing the tear gas yourself through the air. The problem with being sealed off from the outside world is that although you aren't getting any poisonous gas, you're also not getting any fresh air. No worries. The Beast has an onboard oxygen tank that can supply the inside of the car with fresh oxygen for an extended period of time until the president has reached a safe place. Here's what's next. The Dark Brombren is the world's most expensive SUV, featuring armor plating, bulletproof windows, and exotic leather interiors. The starting price for one of these bad boys aimed at the ultra-rich is at least 1.1 million US dollars. Leonard.